Today I will be showing you tail weaves and ribbing. The key to a good tail weave is that it doesn't show on the right side of the work, it doesn't come undone, and it allows the fabric to stretch. So tail weaves in ribbing. This is how I like to do my tail weaves. So I find, so usually you'll be using your, your tail. Um, I'm going to use a red thread to mimic. So I like to find the closest rib, so I'm on the wrong side of my work, um, to where my tail is coming from. And, um, and I begin at the bottom of the rib and I enter from the right and then I follow, I kind of barber pull. So I follow this and go into the next stitch. And then I follow the next stitch and go into the next. And typically, if the ribbing isn't terribly deep, I will go all the way up the ribbing. Like so. Until I reach the top. And I work one duplicate stitch at the top. So I'm going to follow this stitch under here here and then I barber pull down just a few stitches to anchor like so. Now it will not come undone and it stretches and it is not visible from the right side. If the ribbing is quite long, then I may not want to go all the way up. So in that case, I will, I will barber pull up um, several inches. Say I barber pulled all the way up here, and then I will duplicate stitch in the ribbing. like so, and then barber pull down a, a few stitches, like so. That In that instance, it might be slightly visible right there. You can see it. But in the working yarn, this, this would be invisible. You... you, you if you barber pulled up and then didn't anchor, the when the knit is stretched uh, vertically, that tail would begin to work its way loose. So anchoring it and then working a few stitches down the other way really makes sure that this tail is not going to come undone. So that is weaving in tails in ribbing. Thanks for watching.